Hello Ratbags, it's Jay Plays Games. Welcome to the Access Show. Today we're taking an in-depth look at Atlas, the spin-off that was leaked on the Ark Survival Evolved YouTube channel. This happened a couple weeks ago now, but I want to discuss what I really want from Atlas when it comes out. It is going to be a full game. I really do believe it's not going to be a mod or any type of DLC, but a standalone game, and I do believe it's going to end up probably coming out after Extinction. But that said, it'd be amazing if it does stealth launch in the next couple of months. Who knows? Anywho, I do want to talk about what I want from Atlas, judging by the history of Ark Survival Evolved and other games like it, so that we get a really top-notch pirate game. So come with me as I give you my wish list, basically, of what I want in Atlas and what I don't want. This is the Access Show. Let's go. Okay, so we don't know 100% that Atlas is a new game, whether it's a DLC or a mod, but we can certainly talk about what we want from it and discuss ideas about what would make it great and what would make it not so great. Before we delve into that though, I do want to talk about the recent history of pirate games and what competition is really out there, and maybe the unfair or fair comparisons to Sea of Thieves. It's probably filled at least half my comments on my videos I've done on Atlas that the game is copying Sea of Thieves. Newsflash, Sea of Thieves has not that many original ideas in it. If you look back at pirate games in the past, if you look back at the pirate genre in terms of movies and TV shows, there really isn't that new stuff in Sea of Thieves. Skeleton crew members? Check. We've had that in Pirates of the Caribbean before. It's been a mainstay of pirate tales. Being a pirate is all about going out and getting treasure, sailing the high seas, maybe going against other pirates and running away from the forces and government laws. So this idea that Sea of Thieves invented the pirate genre or it invented lots of the aspects that people seem to be getting upset about showcasing in Atlas is a little bit weird. Yes, Atlas does follow some of the very same beats of Sea of Thieves in terms of digging up treasure, some of the gunplay, some of the actual skeleton models look very similar, but that is what you expect from a pirate game. You try and tell me some sort of different pirate game. Give me an idea for a different pirate game that doesn't involve skeleton crewmen or digging up treasure. In the last few years, there hasn't been that many good pirate games. Assassin's Creed Black Flag has pretty much been the sort of benchmark that people aim for in talking about what they want a pirate game to be. But there has been some other near ones. Risen is a big franchise that was popular on Xbox 360 and the PS3. They've been quiet for a while. I don't know if that series is still going. I do believe it had lots of magic in it, lots of different types of creatures, almost a mythological fantasy feel to it, as well as the pirates. On PC, there's a few different types of pirate games. You've got Black Wake, which is very much more a simulation game with pirates, sea people running around trying to pilot a big, huge galleon. Guns of Icarus may not actually be set in the sea, but it certainly is a pirate game where you face off against other pirate ships and the main focus is to take them down, even if they are in the air. So you get the idea. I just want to put that to bed. I don't think Atlas is necessarily just copying Sea of Thieves. It probably has looked at that game and thought, you know what, that's got some cool ideas. But just like every other pirate game before it, a lot of it comes from literature over the years. So there we go, the recent history of pirates by J Plays Games. Now let's get back onto the matter at hand. Atlas, how is it going to differentiate? What's going to make it so special? What can it capitalize on some of the problems with the pirate games of the past? I wish I could say combat would be hopefully a good focus, but from the trailer we've seen, the combat looks pretty naff. It looks just as bad as Sea of Thieves. Combat in Ark Survival Evolved has never been that great. At best, it's been a, just a bit of a spam mode. Combat isn't involved. There is no low parry, high parry, mid parry. You're not going to be suddenly coming up with different types of combos. It is a very simple basic system in Ark Survival Evolved. You just simply whack at people with your pickaxe, your sword, whatever it is you've got in your hand. I don't see that changing for Atlas. It may have different types of weapons, and certainly it's going to have involved more with melee stuff. I'm hoping we're going to get a big choice, but not expecting any sort of major improvements in combat. It looks very much like they've lifted it directly from Ark, and that combat isn't going to improve more than just hack and slash. And that could be a real shame. Imagine a game where it's got a bit more involved combat, where your stance matters, where you hit the player affects things more. Imagine hitting a headshot with a sword or a leg shot with a sword and you could injure someone. Hopefully it'll imply at least some sort of bleeding damage modifiers, maybe something like Conan Exiles, where it's got different status types depending on what weapon you use. Using a big huge club or blunt weapon will make people's armors degrade. If you use something quite pointy and sharp, it's got more piercing damage and make someone bleed more. They're the kind of effects I'd like to see in Atlas. 
So naval combat is obviously a huge aspect of it, and you would argue as well that in Sea of Thieves it's pretty simple. With only one choice of cannon, it's very basic. Atlas seems to take the lead on this, and it does seem to have more ways to fire at other ships. It seems to have much smaller cannons, almost like mortars or ballistas. That would be a really good addition. Ark has definitely used that in the past. We've got a different choice of ballistas and catapults, and I would like to see that in Atlas definitely expanded. In Pirates of the Caribbean, you get launched on a catapult. That would be amazing if we could do something like that in Atlas, where you could launch players across enemy lines or into other forts or onto other boats. It does have zip lines, which look amazing. Again, another mechanic, and you're going to hear this a lot, borrowed from Ark Survival Evolved. Ship combat has got to be right. If you're going to be spending a lot of time at the seas, if you're going to be playing on PvP servers where you're going to be raiding other people, it's really crucial there's different ways to attack other pay players on boats or out of them. Maybe the smaller ships can only certain have certain things like harpoons. Maybe only the larger ships can have big massive rows of cannons. I would definitely like to see choice and variation, not just every boat comes equipped with cannons. One of the most impressive things that people really loved about the Atlas trailer was the sea. It's actually moving, it's got swells, it's got waves, it looks very much like they've borrowed heavily from the same mechanic that's in Sea of Thieves. Coincidentally, both games use the same engine for their sea. Sea of Thieves uses the Unreal Engine as does Atlas. Sea of Thieves does have fantastic looking water, it's probably one of the best features about the game if that is something to celebrate. So Atlas is on the right track with that. I really also like the way that they've got these storms. They look a bit hokey and it doesn't look necessarily that well you know, embellished into the sea, but seeing huge massive tidal waves or whirlpools or storms coming your way is really good it really gives you more immersive feeling and definitely i'd like to see the environment take more of effect i don't just want the sea to be rough i want storms to really affect you maybe it can make players slower as they're moving through the water maybe it will make you have to eat more maybe it reduces your temperature some of them are very basic things that they're probably going to lift from arc anyway because arc does have environmental effects changing your food consumption how hot you are how cold you are etc but i would like to see atlas ramp that up and take it to another level really go be able to go faster when there's good weather and when there's bad weather your ship does come to a crawl they're the kind of immersive things that really go into making you believe you're in a world full of pirates and you're in the dangerous seas one aspect of Ark that has really been underused and not a lot of people really venture that much into it is the sea. Even though there's a bunch of creatures in Ark that live under the sea and there's loads of ways you can go and tame them, they just don't have much use. There's only a few caves to go explore in some of the most basic of the maps on Ark and you can pretty much do that with just basically one type of creature. You don't necessarily have to go into the sea and spend hours, days or weeks taming all the sea creatures. I hope that changes in Atlas. If we are going to have taming, I hope there's different ways that you can have some of the sea creatures and it's going to have uses. They're not going to just be all blanket avoid them you only use one type of creature i'd like there to be different uses for all the creatures in the water and for them to be a danger apart from the megalodon that we've only seen so far i really do hope there's lots of things like jellyfish and all the usual things that you might find in the seas under the sea has to be interesting as well another thing about sea of thieves is that once you get to a certain point there's nowhere else to go other than just keep exploring lands you'll find a few corals maybe a few shipwrecks but considering most of the game is set in the open seas, there's not a lot of reason to dive down and explore. I want that to be changing. I'd like there to be massive underground cities. They've toyed with this before. One of the modders, the guy that created the center map, made underground air bubbles where you could literally build bases in a huge open space that was under the water. I would love something like that in Atlas. Imagine whole areas that have got ruins in them that are completely able to build or make homes in, or even just quests and challenges that you have to go down there and pick up special items. That would be a really good addition considering the rest of the map is going to be mostly water. Well, I say mostly water, but that's not really true. We have seen plenty of land masses, and obviously they're focusing on the pirate theme, maybe borrowing heavily, which Ark and Wildcard have done in the past. They have absolutely aped other movies and games with their trailers and their updates in the past, and so I can see them maybe focusing on that at the moment because of the Sea of Thieves popularity or the fact that it's just a hot topic. But I want landscapes to be interesting too. I want lots of caves. I want lots of places to go and dig up treasure, not just simply little mounds scattered around. 
Ark have tested this mechanic and they've tested it with the archaeology spots that you could dig up and you would get certain artifacts or certain things but mostly it just involved you digging up bones. That was the way it worked, it was meant to give you a bit of hype about archaeology event coming up in Ark. I really hope that's not just the one simple system they've put into Atlas. I really want the treasure to be unique and different and be worth it when you dig up these things rather than just digging up things like berries or crop plots. So making sure the land environments are good, they've got loads of ruins, loads of temples, and some of these build spots or treasure spots are really gonna be in unique. Maybe have puzzles, maybe have real, real challenges getting to some of this treasure. I mentioned it briefly, but taming is gonna be an aspect of Atlas, I'm sure. It's a huge aspect of Ark Survival Evolved, so there's no reason to doubt they're not gonna implement it in some way. I really hope though, they shorten it and they make it just very simple. Taming in Ark Survival Evolved drains away your time. It's one of the biggest negatives about the game. Some people really love it and because it makes it immersive, it makes the challenge of really getting a creature, bringing it down, taming it, making it your own, then breeding it is a real, real coup de grace. But for me, it just drains time. It takes away aspects from gameplay that you could be enjoying yourself doing other things. So I really hope times for tames are much quicker does look like there is going to be a way to tame these creatures like the dire bear, the wolf, but we do hope it's got some interesting mechanics on it as well. Maybe make the process of getting the creatures very quick and easy, and then if you want to breed, keep that at about the same amount of time. I'm not too sure. But does anyone really want to spend another two weeks raising babies? I don't think so. I want this game to be about exploration, about PvP, about taking on other players, finding treasure, taking on the skeleton crews. Don't necessarily want it just to be another tame fest. I can see it now, every YouTuber under the sun, how to tame a 150 Equius, a 150 Dire Bear, a 150, I mean the creatures they've shown aren't that fantastical, so so far we've got probably some of the most boring creatures from Ark Survival Evolved being showcased in Atlas, who wants to tame them? I love riding a horse, I really do. But do I want to just be taming horses all day long? So I really do hope they've also got some unique creatures in the game. Some different creatures, even if they are a bit fantasy driven, I'm down for that. If it's got skeletons in it, why can't it have fantasy creatures? I don't want to see a dinosaur in this game. It would absolutely destroy the game mode for me if I see any type of T-Rex, any type of Dilo, any type of Raptor. I want to see... Creatures that may have been around and when pirates were about or when they was most popular or like I said some fantasy creatures added to it. Alongside the taming one of the biggest mechanics in Ark Survival Evolved and one of the most popular in terms of videos and content is building. People love building bases, people love seeing what people have done with how they've built bases. I really want to see that aspect take centre stage. Building a huge settlement or a town is going to be absolutely phenomenal. So I really hope the build tile sets have been worked on and they've got more variation. They're not just cut and copy paste from Ark. Ark building isn't the greatest. It can take some lessons from Conan Exiles in its building system, which has a better, superior system in terms of how you can place things, and it's much easier to use. But to be honest, they all use a very basic system from the Unreal Marketplace. You can literally go and buy one of these Unreal Marketplace building sets and pop it to any game or mod, and it pretty much works exactly the same as Ark and Conan. Wildcard need to make it so it's more robust, that we can clip things into things better, that things fit and we've got more choice in what we can build and how we build. Part of that though is also making sure it runs well. One of the biggest complaints in Ark is that when you build big bases, it lags the server out. You've got no-go zones on some servers where people have just built huge massive bases or hundreds of turrets and you just cannot go near it because the lag, it just drops down so much. So I really hope they find a way to save on memory with base building. Maybe it'll be a land claim status where you know only claim a certain piece of land. Obviously that is needed because pillaring is still such a big thing. If you don't know what pillowing is on PvE games and even PvP, you run around the island basically popping pillars down and you make it that area your own. That's okay if you're coming back to build something, but a lot of people do it and they never build in that area. They just don't want anyone building anywhere close to them. It ruins a lot of the aspects of PvE on Ark. You just can't run around finding a nice spot to build because someone has pillared it to death. Wildcard have done many different things and tried different things to combat this, but none of it's really worked. They've tried extra special decay timers, but it still is a huge problem. It's meant to get you banned or at least some sort of warning if you do it, 
but they just don't seem to be policing it. So Atlas needs a different system, a landmark system, maybe where it gives you an area of effect where you can build, and maybe you can only have two or three. I know that would limit how far you could go in terms of building a pirate town, but maybe you would have to work with other people then. Maybe you can place your boundaries, your landmark claim next to someone else, and you could join an alliance, and you could actually work together in building a town, a pirate settlement. They also need to work on how they work with PvP servers and in general. Arc is a time sink. What it definitely needs is some sort of offline protection or certain windows for PvP. Conan has done this pretty well. It has limited times for outright PvP. If you come across a player in the PvP servers, you can damn right go and take them out. But there's only certain times you can actually go and attack their bases. I think this mechanic is needed in Ark. It's too much expecting people to always have to be alert and defending their bases, or at least have offline raid protection as standard across all of their servers. Offline raiding is probably one of the most negative aspects of Ark Survival Evolved. It's one that's bitterly complained about in the forums, so I really hope they don't have that in Atlas. They work on something a bit different. Maybe there won't be any base raiding, maybe it will just be about taking stuff from players or being able to destroy their boats, which makes kind of sense as that's where hopefully you'll be at sea the most. But then boats do need destinations to go. We need lots of locations with lots of loot and to make it worthwhile going and raiding someone when they've got their ship at sea. The boat building aspect is really cool, I'm really looking forward to that. They've borrowed that heavily from Survival Plus, a mod for Ark, where you literally just dump your resources into a structure and it builds it up slowly over time. So you don't actually have to place anything, it just comes apart and then there you go, you've got a cottage once you've put enough resources into it. That's what it looks like with the boat. Maybe it's not 100% that though, the way it builds up slowly going around, who knows, maybe you do have to place it, maybe there's a framework where you have to place certain and structures to complete that boat and it won't be seaworthy until you've done that that way you can customize it it does look like there's lots of customization options in terms of being able to paint your flags and the bows of your boat and stuff like that that looks really cool and interesting but i definitely want to see the boat system really really interesting how you build it and being able to build lots of different style boats arc is a buggy horrible game to play sometimes when it runs well, it runs fantastic, you enjoy it, you love going around being immersed with the dinosaurs and I hope that's the same for Atlas, but I really do hope the devs have learned a lot from developing Ark so we don't have such bugs and issues in the game. Like I said, they have gone to probably look at early access, one of their creators or one of their CEOs has mentioned it in the past that they will look at it again for future games, but I really hope that doesn't mean they're just going to load it up with content and don't give a shit about the bugs. Bugs really affect people's gameplay. If they can nail the game so it runs well, even in early access, I think they'll get a lot of people back on board who got tired and fed up of issues not being fixed or being fixed very slowly on Arc Survival Evolved. So there we go, hopefully not too negative, I'm trying to give ideas, not just talk about what I haven't seen in Atlas, I am looking forward to it. The hype train is alive and well with me, I've been dying to play something different and new, I have got fed up with just playing Ark and Taming Creatures. So, going and being a pirate, that actually in a pirate game that works, that's good, that's more interesting, I am so down for that, I can't wait to get more information about Atlas. Whatever Wildcard do, they're definitely going to have a harder time maybe selling this game. Or maybe, in fact, it will be the opposite, it will be easier. There's a big contingent of fans that love Ark, but hate the fact that the devs really didn't pay enough attention to the bugs and issues that have affected people's enjoyment of the game. Whereas there's other people that have just had a great experience with Ark and they just want to see more content. It's definitely going to be one of those situations where the game, for me, has to be top notch if they want to keep the same sort of fan base that Ark's 5 Evolved has. I don't think it will be able to scale the heights that Ark did. Dinosaurs jumped and helped with that massively and I do believe that everyone's got kind of savvy to how wildcard operate and kind of way they work. So unless they really improve the way they work, they're not going to necessarily take all the fans of Mark alongside them to start playing Atlas. I also generally think as well that they've done this as a PR stunt and also to get some feedback. Leak the video, why would you be leaking it on your own YouTube channel? Why are you internally showing anyone an internal trader? That was the name of the upload when it got uploaded and it is a bit odd. There should be only one or two people who have access to that YouTube channel. So unless they was going to put it unlisted, but then that risks someone actually sharing that unlisted video and everyone can see it. So I think they've done this on purpose. I think the leak was revealed on purpose to get some feedback and to kind of get some sort of reaction and see where they are see what people might like about the trailer what they didn't like maybe that gives the developers a huge 
injection of feedback that they can take forward and carry on working on the game, particularly if it's not going to come out until Extinction Arc's third and final DLC in November time. I am Joe Plays Games. This has been Axis Show. You let me know what you think about Atlas. Let me know what you think about Wildcard's development and the thoughts of it may be possibly coming out after Extinction in the comments down below. Until then, Ratbags, I will see you for another Access Show very soon.